What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Sound of Attack once again, and today we're going to talk about the Ethereum Core Devs meeting that happened this morning. Of course, it is the one with Mr. Bitsby Trippin presenting EIP 3368. I will leave that to Bitsby Trippin to fully cover in his summary video, which will be linked down below. There are two other EIPs that we need to discuss in relation to EIP 1559 and London that you should be aware of that I'm going to focus primarily on, and then let Bits handle the rest while we will briefly mention at least what the results were. Without further ado, here's a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is BlockFi. BlockFi provides financial products for crypto investors. Products include high yield interest accounts, USD loans, and no fee trading. With BlockFi, there are no hidden fees, just a return of up to 8.6% APY that starts accruing immediately, plus compounding interest every month. Committed to trust and transparency, BlockFi services comply with comprehensive state and federal regulations, and they use Winklevoss's Gemini as their primary custodian, wrapping layers of industry-leading protection around clients' assets. To facilitate this transparency, BlockFi allows me to mention that they are centralized and there is a potential for loss. So as with any investment, do your own research. Personally, I have funded over 4,000 USD equivalent in Bitcoin to my BlockFi account and accrued additional interest on top of my mining rewards. For a limited time, you can earn crypto bonus of up to $250 when you open a new account by visiting the link in the description, blockfi.com slash son of a tech. Welcome back. We got some sunglasses on to basically protect my eyes from the ring light and yet you guys can still see me as... I just had laser eye surgery done. I can still read the screen, sort of, so that's good. And the first thing we need to talk about is EIP 3403, which proposes partial removal of refunds. Why is this being done? Well, from what I could gather, it's this. Miners currently fill blocks with tokens, filling the states completely up. With EIP 1559, you can temporarily have a lot more gas and block processing performed, and with refund burning, the effect would be further magnified, I think by four, he said, something along those lines. The proposal says that this could be fixed by making refunds not carry across transactions or blocks. This is something that I've mentioned previously, and I think should be addressed. Now, the concern apparently isn't as high um, in regards to the rest of the Ethereum dev team at this time. So it is being tabled and they will be considering a formal inclusion. From my understanding, the EIP wasn't even fully an EIP. It was more of just a discussion. I want you guys to keep your eyes on it because it will affect how the mining pools operate, which could in turn obviously affect your profit at the end of the day, depending on what decisions are made. Okay, so that brings us to EIP 3368, which is the one that Bitsby Trippin presented. Now, to give you guys an idea on what this does, it increases the block reward to three and then decays it over the period of two years to one, essentially at the end of the day. Now, from an optics standpoint, this just doesn't look good for miners in general because it just makes them look like they're greedy because they want to increase the block reward. The actual concern for Bitsby Trippin in particular is to pre prevent a sharp drop off of hash rate on the network, creating a security risk for Ethereum. Now that we got both sides kind of solved there, you guys should be able to tell that this really isn't about what either party thinks it's about. And you guys need to get on the same page. All right, because <laughs> it's getting absolutely exhausting going through the comment section. That being said, BBT presented it from a point of view of keeping the EIP as an adjustment if needed. That means essentially that unless it's needed and there is a sharp drop off or we get closer and it appears that that may be the case, that this wouldn't be included at all. It did seem to be received from that perspective a lot better from the core devs. So from a pre presentation standpoint, Good job on that, Michael. However, they did bring up the point that I've been talking about for a while, which is the amount of ASICs on the network. Alex brought up that ASICs are pretty much only ET hash, the ASIC devices that are mining Ethereum, and that pretty much there is no other coin that's as profitable or even close to as profitable on ET hash as Ethereum. 
and he's not wrong. You got ET Classic, which isn't anywhere close, as well as you got maybe Ether One, which is nowhere as close and still has the same governance issues as Ethereum. <clears throat> Yeah, I said it. All right, so what does that mean? It basically means that there won't be a sharp drop off of hash rate, mainly due to the fact that you you would have to drop profitability for the way further than 30 to 40% for anything else to be more profitable on these ASIC machines that have been deployed to the network. So at the end of the day, the ASICs have basically won the battle for Ethereum and EIP-1559 here, and I kind of had a feeling that would be the case. Now, one of the statements that I found absolutely hilarious, and I do have to call out, is someone named Danny said, um, in regards to this, you shouldn't mess with monetary policy. What is EIP-1559 if it isn't adjusting monetary policy? Genuine question. I just want to make that clear because it just seems silly to me because the entire, since the existence of Ethereum, they have been changing the monetary policy with an ultimate goal of changing it to proof of stake. So if we are going to make monetary policy changes, we need to discuss them. That's my only point there, okay? It just seems a little silly to make that sort of statement, especially in regard to EIP-1559. Now, like I said, I want you guys to follow Bitsby Trippin and check out his summary of what happened with 3368. And I wanna move on to EIP-3382. Now, when we initially did our EIP-1559 discussion, or we did our video on that, I had mentioned that essentially what was going to happen is you had a hard-coded block gas limit. And this was to essentially make it hard or de-incentivize miners from growing the block size. Well, to my knowledge and understanding now, this has been removed from EIP-1559. So they were presenting EIP-3382 to once again put that block limit back in place to de-incentivize miners from growing the block size. It's not going to be included. It's very weird. Everything's very interesting and very odd. I want you guys to think about that for a second. What does this all mean for mining as a whole? Well, actually, from the last two EIPs, there are the two EIPs that they're talking about implementing with it, and then those being tabled, to me it appears that mining is going to be more profitable than we initially anticipated for EIP-1559, primarily due to the fact that there is no hard-coded block gas limit currently in place, and that you can initiate, of course, the refunds across blocks and transactions. So if we are taking that perspective, plus adding in the MEV that has now also been added, into beta for ethermine.org, it is possible that we really don't see much of a drop in the profitability of ETH. I think there still will be a drop, but I think that's primarily going to be due to either price and value surrounding Ethereum, and then of course how well EIP 1559 goes into implementation the pool reactions, what they decide to do, and then what happens with these EIPs that they're talking about rolling in to cap the block gas limit, as well as, of course, uh, doing something about the refunds. It's going to be interesting. I'm not smart enough to go through all of it. I can just give you guys the very simplified, I guess, looking down on it view of what I can interpret as just a regular dude. I'm interested in your thoughts and opinions on it. Once again, if you are currently a miner, it is very simple. You mine the most profitable thing and then you trade for whatever you think is gonna hold its value or price, depending on your goals, the most. I don't think it needs to be any more complicated than that for you guys. What do I see happening in July? a possible drop in profitability of mining Ethereum. 
if it goes below the profitability of another coin or another algorithm, then you just swap to that other coin or algorithm. Will this be detrimental to the ETH network? Possibly, but not likely due to the amount of ASICs on the network. Are there issues with, of course, Ethereum right now? If a majority of ASICs are on the network and the GPU miners leave? Possibly, depending on how the pools for the ASICs handle, of course, these refunds, handle MEV, and then handle, of course, the block gas limit. If they keep trying to drive that up, that could be an issue uh, for Ethereum in general. And then I still think and will stand by that another issue with Ethereum in general is the way MEV works with back running and making off-chain deals, which I do not support. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.